of them. We can go forward a little bit. Yep, so he's coming back to, uh, no, he's going to the right. Let me see if I can get a good, three fish. There we go. Oh, that's a nice fish. You can just see him under the surface, and you see that big beak come up and go over the top of the fly. And when you, you lift that rod and you feel the weight, oh, it just makes it all worthwhile. All that practice of, of, of casting and getting in the right spot really pays off when that fish just goes bang and loves it. Unreal. Look how beautiful that is. You can just see that fish. The clarity in this water is incredible. And you can, you'll just see him uh, swimming across in there. You'll get a glimpse in a minute. Just that fly just under the surface as he takes off. And they're just a lot of power. I mean, I'm using six pound uh, Reverge Grand Max in fluorocarbon, which is very thin and I think ideal for this style of fishing. And it does tend to sink a bit, which is what you want with a lot of these dry flies as well. Uh, and we'll just tire him out. But just stunning to get the, uh, the visual aspect of it. Just as I'll try and steer him around this side for you. Incredible fish. And again, I've, I've said it all day, the power in these fish are just incredible. Get him back around. Just as he's uh, hooked up a little bit of weed in there. And that's a good solid bend on the, the Stalker Legend six weight. And they do need some steering once you, uh, you hook these fish. And I can hopefully get his head up in a second. We can probably even when if we can oh he's not ready yet and that's the beauty of fishing and especially now now's not the time not to panic they uh this one is lucky that it's me catching him because a lot of these uh certainly end up on the dinner table which is fantastic but uh, they fight right to the end and i reckon todd might be able to get the net under him Beautiful, well done, excellent. And that's just incredible. That's just a wonderful fish, thanks Todd. To get fish like this in an environment like yeah. what we've got. Beautiful. Oh yeah, Look that's a that. beauty. I mean, that, that's four pound if it's a, an ounce. That's beautiful fish. Yeah, we might just whack him back in the water for a second. Just lift him and just whack him there and look after him. Because it's pretty warm, uh, I think it's very important if you are gonna release your fish that you keep them in the water for as long as you can. Um, funny enough, like if we ran 100 metres, we wouldn't want anyone to stick our head in a bucket of water. I don't think these fish do either. So we keep them in the water, we can get that hook out and uh, send them on their way, look after them for somebody else to come and catch as well. So uh, pretty good, pretty good. So thanks mate, good, good steering. It's teamwork, a lot of this fly fishing. You know, I've got Todd, I can just yell orders at him to where to steer the boat with the electric and get me in the right position and uh, yeah, you, you get a good cast in, the fish likes it, and you go, well, it's all worthwhile, isn't it? You know, so it's pretty good. And shallow water, oh. you couldn't ask for anything. No, Fantastic. just beautiful. Visual, yep. perfect. perfect. And the sad thing is we've got to do it for the rest of the day as well. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, that's just stunning. A, uh, a four pounder. Oh, look at that. Out of Penstock Lagoon. Absolutely incredible, and you just never get sick of that. We'll just support him here for a minute. Great fish. It'll just take a little bit of time to get going again. 
incredible, but just a brilliant fish. Just in the sun. Stunning colours, and he's just about good to go. Beautiful. Alright, we've got another one further over. No, no, that's no, right, I should be able to. He'll move around. He actually is there, or he might have got a glimpse of us. I oh, know, there he is. I might just do, here we go. What I'll do, I'll put a cast out. It's one just rising just on the other side of that weed. I'll put a cast out from here. When I untangle the line. And I think you'll find it. He seems to be in quite a searching pattern. And uh, I think when, when you'll hear at various times in some of our shows, like they'll talk about the trout who's on a beat and his beat is essentially his home where he lives and he'll patrol around and he knows where everything is and where the food is. And uh, he'll go down to the backyard, eat all the food, go to the front yard, eat all the food and then come back again. So if I just lay a trap, put that fly there, right in the middle of where he'd been swimming around, he'll find it and hopefully we'll see a head come up out of his little uh, pantry. There's another fish, I'm not sure whether you can see it, at the end of my fly line. It's about a two or three pound fish right at the end of the fly line. It may not come up on the, the camera. And there's another one out to the left. Here we go, there's a fish going over to it. Now when you're shark fishing, there's a few things that you want to keep in mind. Number one is the sun. We re need really bright sun to be able to see these fish. There's a lot of water out here, you don't want to be blind casting it. You want to um, be able to watch that fish go, we put that fly in front of it. The other is the ideal uh, wind is a northerly and rougher the better. It really uh, gets everything moving and um, gets the fish really active when the wind really blows. I'm using a, a six weight, it's a stalker legend, a nine foot six weight, because at times you're going to have to punch into the wind with the wind and you're going to have to do it quite quickly because you need to get that fly in front of that fish pretty quickly. Most importantly, the fish's mouth is at the front, so make sure you get that fly ahead of it. They rarely eat them with their tail, so uh, get it in front of that fish and you have every chance of catching them. I use like uh, quite a big fly, you want something noticeable, so you have a, a few different variations something that's going to stand out from the crowd rather than normal sort of done patterns that you would use. Certainly they would work, but these are more likely to be seen. And because they're opportunistic feeders out here in the, the open areas of the lake, they're going to take these genuinely uh, without hesitation. So get a good selection of flies for the shark fishing on the right day. And you're going to have a lot of fun. Yep, here he goes. He's going to it. Good, beautiful. And that was ideal. That was uh, fantastic. We're just drifting down with the current in these lovely little wind lanes. And it's called shark fishing, which is pretty amazing. And he's just gone under the boat. We don't want him under there. And uh, we have these uh, trout, both browns and rainbows. Oh, he's got a bit of go down there. We'll just cruise along up current, up into these waves. And uh, you can just see them. They look like sharks just under the surface. And you've got to be quick. You've got to try and get that fly. We've got a dry fly, quite a big one, uh, to attract a bit of attention and look like it's something he's going to eat. Um, and it'll look like, a, like a, maybe a, a grasshopper or something like that. And he certainly saw it and come over and decided he wanted to eat that. So it's fantastic. And uh, he's just uh, just starting to come up. We can see a little bit of colour now. So we're in quite deep water here in Great Lake. And he's just decided to come up. 
and we'll get him in a second. Ready? Here right. we go. We've got him up near the, the top. Oh, I can get him over to Jared. We'll be able to net him in a second. Perfect. Just on the top, we'll just get him over to Jared. Beautiful. Well done. Excellent, mate. And that's the fly we've uh, we've used. You can just see, oh, it's just come out just then. There's a lovely big pattern, foam, so it will float really well. And it worked really well on this lovely Great Lake Brown. Much darker colours on the top there, but a beautiful fish. Great little fish is about uh, two and a half, three pound. And uh, Oh, he's good to go now, I think. Yep, he was really good to go. So that's pretty fantastic. We've um, been drifting here for a little while, just looking for that brown shape, just to skim across the surface, like what we've seen there. And uh, sure enough, you've got to get that fly in front of him. You don't necessarily want to land it on top of him. That's going to frighten him. but leading by a couple of metres and uh, he's aware of um, everything on the surface there. So he's looking around, sees something that looks like food uh, and he's going to give it a taste test and that worked out pretty well. So the shark fishing in Great Lake is a fantastic thing to do, particularly when you get a bit of wind and it might be hard fishing in a lot of other places. You get out here, take your time, drift with the, uh, the flow, you get some, some good sun and you're going to spot a lot of fish and have a lot of fun. So shark fishing in Great Lake. Great fun. One there. Here we go, straight up to it. He'll murder it. Oh! Oh! He didn't. He didn't put that right in front of him and he's, he's heard the splash, I think, and he's come straight up to it and then looked at it and then went, something's wrong, and uh, turned away. We've got quite a big fly that worked just before um, that would look like a, a big grasshopper or a, um, a locust or something like that that certainly normally works, but on that particular fish, he didn't like it. So. Uh, Anyway, a bit of a shame. Main thing is that you can see him. Again, I always talk about it. So visual fly fishing. You see it, get him to come up. Didn't get him to take that time, but uh, I reckon the next one will. Yep. Nice. That was beautiful. That was, uh, that was how it's supposed to work. Jared, wasn't it? He, uh, we're just slowly drifting down and uh, you can see this brown shape just sort of cruising through the water. And the first cast was a little bit to the right and uh, didn't see it. Must have been the wind because it wouldn't have been bad casting. And uh, yeah, we, we cast a little bit to the left and it's just going to be in his window and he, he's good enough to be able to see it, which is Fantastic, and straight across. They are just so opp opportunistic. Oh, has he got a bit of go in him now? And that's with the six weight, the stalker legend in a six weight. At times it's gonna be windy, so you want something with a bit of power to, to bust through the, uh, the wind and throw some big flies as well. But perfect, lovely, oh, he's there. Oh, he's off again. But we'll get a look at him in a minute. Beautiful, excellent mate, but a brilliant fish. That was exactly to plan, you know, what you're expecting from shark fishing, just cruising up uh, into the, the, the breeze, put that fly out in front of him, he sees it and he goes bang, and you go, perfect. It's great when a plan comes together and it just makes it all worthwhile. Beautiful fish, lovely Great Lakes brown trout, green back golden sides and a bit of silver in there just perfect and great fun great fun
just hold him there and I, until he's good to go and he'll get a bit of a kick in a minute. Come on, mate. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Well, that's great. Gotta love this shark fishing. It's all, uh, I mean, with all of uh, Tassie's fishing, it's all so visual, whether they're up on duns um, or midge fishing. It is just so stimulating. And to, to go shark fishing is ideal. You're drifting in, you're watching that, that fish, you've got a plan. And uh, when it works out, it's just fantastic. So uh, yeah, love shark fishing. There's another one out to the left. Here we go, there's a fish going over to it. Not that catching fish is so important, but it really gets your heart pumping because it's just that visual aspect and you can watch it unfold. And we're dealing with fish, you know, which you can't always uh, control. Oh, he's going over to it. Oh, no, and he's off. Lovely little fish just here. Oh, he didn't see it. He's going up. Where's he going? Here we go. Straight over to it. Come on, mate. It's a bit rude. You can eat, we need to find new ones. I think we've tormented these enough. We've got a ripper out of this lovely corner, so uh, yeah, hopefully we'll find a few more down there. Now we've just done uh, a few drifts in the deeper water and uh, funny enough the weather's probably a little bit too good and there were no duns and no fish up rising. So we've come across to one of the banks that's probably a little bit um, uh, uh, more covered with trees and that can, you know, uh, you can get duns there out of the wind and hopefully that'll bring the fish on. And instantly once we've got over here we've seen a, a few duns on the water which is a good sign. We just need more of them and for the fish to work it out too. We've got one that's risen just down here and they're quite splashy rises so it's making a lot of noise and often leaping out of the water. They're only smaller fish, but we think it might be a caddis, so we've swapped to a, a caddis fly. Oh, that is a tiny little fish. Hopefully he's got a bigger brother around there somewhere, but uh, we're hoping that uh, the caddis fly will make the difference. wrapped around the weed but that's okay weed uh, oh oh geez they are that's plenty of power in, in just a little fish too that's uh, he's probably only a couple of pounds but that's ripping out line like you wouldn't believe you know for a good solid little fish and uh, we had put the camera down there for a little while because she was pretty hard going and just prospecting, it's, um, you can lose a bit of interest when you're uh, the cameraman there. And that's terrific, isn't it? I mean, the water's just so cool. They've got plenty of energy and it's just fantastic. And uh, as soon as he took it, he knew he was in trouble. There's a couple of leaps. And uh, he almost wrapped me around that strap weed. And that's one of the problems you can have, particularly when using three flies as well. Something can hook up in there, but at the end of the day, we're going to let him go anyway, so it doesn't really matter, you know, if he did get away. But uh, it's always good to make sure you get a fish just to let yourself know that you're doing the right thing. 
and we'll get Todd there to uh, to net him and perfect and he's taken that caddis which is uh, what we changed to something a little bit different and that sits high in the water and they uh, take that very aggressively so sometimes if, if something's not working uh, you've got to change and that's what uh, brought about the undoing of this fish a nice little caddis pattern and away he went and as we can see I had three flies now I've only got two the last one's broken off as well on that strap weed so you always go lighter with the tippet so if it does hook up well then that's uh, will break off and we still get the fish so that's pretty ideal and a little bit later in the day and uh, we were just about saying that oh the, the mayflies might have stopped a bit and we saw a mayfly and sure enough there was a rise Todd put it uh, literally on his nose and he decided that was perfect Lovely little uh, galvan reel, that one. That's a that's a ripper. Certainly wakes you up from your slumber, mate, doesn't it? When uh, yeah, you're sitting there and they start ripping out line. No, you're just starting to think the back's getting a little sore <laughs> and a little fatigued, and you see a rise. Yeah. Instant energy. Exactly. Yeah. This fish has um, got some power. Yeah. It's a brown. I believe so. Yeah. Today all we've got are, are browns, but uh, there's um, certainly plenty of rainbows here, Todd. Rainbows will often take late, later in the afternoon. Yep. Uh, we were hoping for some rainbows shortly, but... Uh, yep. Okay. There we go. Beautiful. They all count, mate. Beautiful fish again, like two, two and a half pound. Beautiful little fish, oh, and he's ready to go straight off. There you go, happy as Larry. So um, that worked out pretty well. So I think that's probably a good way to end um, the day on a on Todd's fish before he catches more than me. He's probably a good good one to uh, to finish on. So we've had a, a wonderful day here at Penstock. Um, it's a fabulous fishery. You know, it's much easier in a boat, but you can certainly fish it from the bank. And you're going to have some really exciting fishing, you know, if the, uh, the timing's right and, and the food's there for them. It's outstanding. So if you get the chance, get across to Tasmania, you'll absolutely love it. And you certainly, yeah, won't regret it, eh, Todd? Yeah, good one. All right, well, I look forward to uh, catching you on the fly. <laughs>